My name is Denise Dell, and we're going to be talking about parent functions. Parent functions have a particular point that we call a focal point. So you will have to memorize these graphs and know where their focal point lies. Y equal X, the focal point lies at the origin, 0, 0. The parent curve, y equals to x squared, this is a linear function, this is a quadratic function. The focal point also lies at the origin. Then we have our disco fever, as I like to call it, x cubed. And your parents should remember disco fever. And that is also a focal point at the origin. That's your right arm and that's your left arm and we're all dancing and having a good time. <laughs> We've got our y equal to the square root of x function. That has a focal point also at the origin. And it looks like a sideways parabola. It's just the top part of the parabola. So if I turn the paper this way and drew another part, you would see that it resembles the parabola function or the quadratic function. And then we also have the absolute value function. The absolute value of x and it looks like this with its focal point at the origin also. The domain and range is also very important to functions. With our domain and range, this graph and this graph and this graph, all in this one, all four have a domain of all real numbers. That means there's no restriction on x. I can place any number into x and square it. I can place any number into x and cube it. I can place any number into x and take its absolute value, and I can take any number into x and set it equal to itself. But the problem with the square root of x, it has a domain restriction because we can't take the square root of negative numbers. So therefore, we can only use values that are greater than zero or equal to zero to take the square root of. So these parts over here are not used for x. Negative x values are not in the domain. So even though these four graphs all have a domain of all real numbers, the square root of x only has a domain of x is greater than or equal to zero. The range on our linear function, y equal to x, the range is negative infinity to positive infinity or all real numbers. Here the range is values that are greater than or equal to zero. We do not have any y values that are negative, so therefore its range is restricted to greater than or equal to zero. Here, if you notice, our curve goes to negative infinity and positive infinity with no restrictions, so our range here is also all real numbers. On our absolute value, the square root of any number is a positive y, so again, we do not have any negative numbers. So we have the range is greater than or equal to zero. We cannot use all of these positive y's, we just can't use the negatives. Over here, the y values, again, cannot be negative because there's no way that an absolute value of a number can produce a negative number. So therefore, the range is also greater than or equal to zero. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed the lesson. This has been Miss Delk with Math 2 GCA.